Hi everyone, it's Lori and welcome to the channel. Today I am working on this gorgeous flower that I shot at the Chicago Botanic Garden. And this is the before. So these gardenias were blooming, but they were way up high and it was in a greenhouse where there is that clear glass that just reflects all the light. And it was a pretty gray day, but it was just filled with this white kind of ugly light. And so I wanted to save this image. I just love the swirls of the flower and I can just smell it when I look at it. So I've been working on a couple different ways to edit this image. I just got started and I thought I should record this and take you along. So let me show you the technique that I used to get to this point. So let's go ahead and start back at the beginning. I'm going to duplicate my image. Now I am choosing to do this in Photoshop. If you don't use Photoshop, you could try something similar in Lightroom. But I think if you watch this technique, I think you will really like it and be able to do it even if you don't typically use Photoshop. So the first thing I want to do is isolate my subject. So I'm going to use the Select Subject button. Now if you don't have this menu at the bottom, you can go up to Window and you want to select Contextual Taskbar. And that will pop that up for you. Alright, so we're going to select Subject. We're going to let Photoshop do the selection for us. And it did a pretty good idea, uh, pretty good selection. It missed one area, but that's okay. Um, I'm not too worried about it. We could um, try to add this, but we don't need the selection to be perfect. Now I'm going to click the invert. That's going to give us the marching ants on the outside. That lets you know that our flower is protected and we can do anything we want to this outside area. Okay. So the next thing I want to do is use the filter. I'm going to do a Gaussian blur filter and it's going to apply it just to the background. So let me show you what happens. So if I take that blur all the way up, there's my flower or at least the mask of the flower that we did. So I'm going to bring this down. I want to keep some of the detail, but I also want it to be a lot softer. So I think maybe around 50 50% 50 could work. All right, I'm going to click OK. And now I'm going to stay right here and I'm going to grab my eyedropper. From here, I'm going to grab some of this green color. So we just could pick maybe this kind of lighter shade of green. Then I'm going to grab my brush and let's start at about a 50% brush opacity. Now the brush that I'm using is just a soft round brush. All right, and again, let's start at maybe about 50%. I'm gonna enlarge my brush. I like to work with a really large soft brush. And now I'm just using my trackpad to come around and just add some of that green color. Now, if you think it's too bright, you can lower down your opacity. And again, I'm just gonna pop this in to blend and bring a little bit more cohesiveness to the background. So I'm just popping this all around. And what's great is it's not going to apply it to our flower. So that's the beauty of using this technique of selecting your subject. I'm going to get those corners where they're a little bright and these dark spots. Now, if you keep your opacity low, you can just click multiple times to get it darker where you want it. Again, I want to darken those corners a little bit. I'm going to come down right here. Now, what I like to do, and I think it's a trick that I've learned over the years, is I don't want to just use this one color. We want it to look really natural. So what I'm going to do is use the eyedropper. I'm actually going to select our flower color because if we were, you know, I truly shot this out in the natural habitat, there were multiple blooms all over this flower. So what we're going to do is add some of that color that we would have seen um, out there in the garden. I'm gonna keep that opacity low, but I'm just gonna pop in a little bit of that color. So just kind of blending it all together. Now you could also use lighter shades that are in your background. Um, you know, any 
anything that you really want to add, you could. We can also come back in and pick this really lighter kind of sage color of green. Grab our brush. I'm going to lower the opacity even further. And you can just kind of in these darker areas pop in some of that. You're really building your own. I'm going to get in here to this center with it. You're really building and creating your own background and your own texture. Now where this is dark, I just want to kind of pop in some of that. Now, once you feel really good with what you have, you can do Command or Control and the letter D. Oh, I hit the wrong key. Command or Control D to get rid of your marching ants. And now you can see where your image stands. Now, the next thing that I do is I want to reduce the opacity on this layer just a little bit. Maybe take it to 80. That's going to bring back the detail in our original image. So let's look at it before. Look how harsh that background was. It just did not enhance this flower. And now it's right here. Now there may be some areas that need a mask because your, your selection of your flower was a little harsh. So what you can do is add a mask. We are going to use a black brush. I'm gonna take the opacity up to maybe, maybe 70%. Make this brush really small. And I'm just going to come in. Yeah, that's not going to work. So let's flip it. So this is a case where what we may want to do is add a little blur on these edges, but we can also just use the clone tool. So let's go ahead and do a stamped layer, Command Option Shift and the letter E. And then with that new layer, let's see if I can get that to work. There we go, there's our new layer. I am going to use the clone tool. And what we wanna do, I'm gonna to have to click the option key to get it to select. All right, and I just wanna kinda of soften this edge. So I'm gonna, again, select that. And that's not what I wanted. Just kinda of come along And this is where you just start kind of a little bit of cleanup if you need to around the edges. Now probably what I would also do, this edge is a little bit harsh, so I am just going to select right here next to it. And then I'm just going to come along. Let me zoom up for you guys. I'm just going to soften that edge a little bit. This one still has a um, that dark thread around it, but I think that's okay. There was also a little, I think it was a little bug right here, so I'm just gonna fix that while I'm in here. Um, this petal right here kind of bothers me, so I'm gonna select this green area, and I'm just gonna come up. Now, if you go over it too much, then what I'm gonna do is um, grab the eraser tool, make the eraser really small, and then just come in and clean up that edge. It's kind of got a shadow there. So let's go back to our clone tool. Grab it right there. Yeah, and just clean up that edge a little bit. So this is when you can get really nitpicky if you want to kind of come around and clean things up. I don't love that dark edge. I'm just not sure. I could try the clone tool over it some more. I could also, um, we could also blur it again, but it's being, I'm being a little bit nitpicky with it because it did have that edge there before, but it does stand out to me. So I'm gonna have to think about how to fix that one. But for the purposes of this, I wanted to just show you kind of what it looks like. So I think now that I'm looking at this from a distance, I think what I'm going to do is go to this area and just soften, yeah, soften that edge. There we go. Just kind of come in and reshape that edge to soften that. And then it's just not quite as noticeable. Yeah, 
I think that's better. So the purpose of this video was just to show you one way that I go about working on the background to make some improvements with it. You could continue, I would continue to edit this flower image. I would continue to do maybe a little bit of cleanup, but I really just um, love how it transformed the background and it's given us a really nice image to work with. So let's look at one more example. Let's see where I have the image. Here we go. So this is an image that I also shot in a garden area. So it was in a greenhouse and um, just had a lot of harsh light and I wasn't able to get it isolated. So we've got some cleanup to do on this image. The first thing I wanna do is I am still gonna go ahead and let's select our subject and see how well Photoshop does. Okay, it did a good job but it did select our stem. So I'm gonna come up and grab the quick selection tool and do the subtract. I wanna remove that stem, there we go. Okay, now we've got this selected. Um, so we've got our flower selected, which is great. Now I'm going to invert and I want to go ahead and the first thing I wanna do is use the remove tool and I want to remove this stem. And I'm just going to come down. Now I can come close to the flower and click the check because it is protected. So let's use that remove tool and get rid of that line. Sometimes you have to go over it a couple times. So we're going to go over it one more time. Click the checkbox. That's not too bad. I also don't like this line right here. So I'm going to go over this one and click the checkbox to remove. All right, not too bad. Let's go up and just do a little bit more on that one. Okay, now I'm gonna use the same technique. So I wanna come in first and I'm gonna apply a blur. Now you could do a different type of blur if you wanted. One of my favorites is to do a box blur. So we could try that one. And that actually is pretty nice. I'm gonna lower the opacity again. Uh, yeah, maybe about 90%. That's pretty nice. Click OK. All right, and now what I want to do again is I'm going to grab my um, paint color, my eyedropper. I think I want to use this lighter color. It's a little green gray. Grab the brush and let's take our opacity maybe to 50%. Get that really large brush and I'm just going to apply, pop around in these dark areas, especially in this bottom corner. This blue, I really don't want that blue in here. Anywhere where there's a big distortion, I'm just gonna come in and where we had that line, I'm just gonna clean that up. And I don't want that gold, so I don't need that gold color in this image, but we can remove that another way if we need to. Now I can also now grab my eyedropper and add some of this darker color, which was in the scene. And I'm just gonna pop that around and you can change your blend mode. You can change your opacity. You know, just think about this as if you were painting. So that's what um, I really like about the tool. All right. So once you're finished with that initial overview, do Command or Control D to get rid of your marching ants. And then again, we can lower the opacity. It has definitely softened it. Now, it did bring back our um, blurb right there. So you have to remember that if you're going to reduce the opacity, then um, you're going to see those mistakes that were already in there. So what we would have to do is use the remove tool again if you wanted to totally get rid of those um, that area. So let me just come in and clean up that line. And you know what? We need to duplicate that layer so that we can be at 100% and um, get that cleaned up. Let's try it again. All right, that's better. And we can still see some of the details. I am gonna get rid of that gold spot. Maybe the gold spot down there. 
is a little bit of distraction, yeah, right up there in the image and a little bit more right there. I'll just kind of play with that. And then if you wanted, you could actually come in and clone some of this. Um, I'm going to duplicate this background. You could use your clone tool. And if you wanted to make this pretty large and kind of copy some of this leaf pattern to bring that cohesiveness to the image, you could pop some of that around and duplicate that look. So as if you had those um, leaves right there, let me get it right here. There you go. So just adding some of those around. Um, and then as we duplicate that, we could bring that down to this corner. So you just want to go around and make the image look really, um, you know, uniform, consistent. I think I'd like some of this lighter color over here as well. So just kind of continuing to um, work on blending it. And I also think this leaf needs to just kind of come off the page. So I'm just going to bring that down. And so you could just continue and then maybe you even want to pop some of um, this white color. You could grab your eyedropper, select this color, grab your brush and continue to maybe pop some of that in here, especially if you think it's gotten a little a little too dark and you want to add add some of that around the image for some detail. So several ways that's kind of before that last round of adding some things to it. I think right here is fine. I definitely on this layer would correct that, um, this leaf right here. So it probably definitely clone this. I don't like when things just, you know, they stop abruptly. So I would definitely kind of bring that down. But I think this is probably the image that I like the best. And you can see before how how kind of messy and distracting it is from our flower. And now we've got it really um, cohesive, the lines, the color, and then we can begin to edit our flower image if there's things we want to do to it. So I hope you enjoyed looking at two different examples of really working on your background to remove those distracting elements and just help you create a really stunning, gorgeous flower image. Thanks for watching, everybody.